Well, good morning. How's everybody feeling? Missing that hour of sleep, I bet, because I know I'm missing it. Uh, I always hate this day because you lose the hour of sleep, but it's also great because, praise the Lord, warmer weather is on its way. Can I get an amen? Yes. I'm all about the warmer weather. I don't like it's cold. What's funny is like today is literally one of the coldest days of the winter, isn't it? I mean, it's, it, anyway, I thought we were almost done, ends up being almost the coldest day. Well, welcome this morning. My name is Jeremy. I know some of you may not even know who I am. I am the executive pastor here at the church, and uh, most weeks I am down at the Fenwick campus on Sunday. So, man, I'm pumped to be able to be here with you guys today. Uh, pastor Danny's taking a well-deserved break this week and uh, getting refreshed, so um, if, uh, if this is your first First time, I apologize. Uh, all I can say is uh, come back and hear uh, the man uh, next week and uh, you won't be disappointed. So, by the way, can I just take a moment and tell you how much I love my pastor? Can I just brag on my pastor a little bit? I'll, man. I was telling uh, the first service that it's uh, around 30 years that he's been here, but somebody corrected me afterwards. It's almost 40 years that Pastor Danny has been here and faithfully serving and uh, leading this church. And so for me to be able to get up on this stage and to stand behind the same pulpit and to share this, uh, honestly, I just, man, I'm honored. And I know you think I'm just trying to get a raise or something from my boss, but um, I feel so blessed to be here. And uh, maybe the better word is lucky. I feel lucky to be able to serve on this staff and to be able to serve with somebody uh, like Pastor Danny and, and Karen. And um, so, man, I'm just so grateful for them. And do me a favor, if you love your pastor this morning, can you just make some noise for him? So we are in a series called All the Feels, and uh, I get the task of kind of closing out this series uh, together with you today. And I got to be honest, I've kind of been all in my feels lately, which Nate, uh, now, so Nate, uh, 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 you guys know Nate, he, he did the announcements up here. Don't you love Nate? Can you give? <laughs> You're the man. And I saw your new kicks this morning, too. I, those are looking good, by the way. Well done there, man. I, I really dig those. And, uh, but Nate has quickly become my guy to make sure that um, I, I say things that are, are hip. <laughs> no. Uh, Nate's quickly becoming my guy for me to know that I'm saying things that are popping. No. Uh, banging? Uh, snapping. All right. Well, obviously, I still need some, uh, some help with that. Um, but I have been all in my feels lately. And maybe it's because of the season of life I'm in. You know, I've got a daughter who's getting married this year. Whew. Any dads? Oh, man, that will, that will just... Tear a dad up. I, they've been sending me pictures of wedding dresses that they're trying on and talking all about. Oh, man. So maybe it's because of that reason that uh, there she is. Look at, isn't she pretty? He better be good to her. I'm like, I'll hurt him. Uh, that's her fiance there, though. That's JT. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I prayed him in, by the way. He's a uh, executive pastor over in uh, Salisbury at a church plant there. And uh, so anyway. I'm going to quit bragging on that. But maybe it's because of that that I've been in my feels. Uh, maybe it's my son who, uh, he's going to college right now for biblical study. He wants to be a pastor. And you know that moment where you kind of see your kids starting to step into what God has for him. I could have told uh, him when he was five years old that he'd be a pastor one day because I saw it in him. Uh, but to see him step into it, and you know what's funny today is, um, you know, we do the simulcast thing down in the Fenwick uh, at the church. And so this week, me not being there as we're broadcasting down there, it was a little nerve wracking. And apparently things fell apart first service and they didn't get the broadcast. And so my son got up and preached this morning at Fenwick. How cool is that? How cool is that? 
So that's got me all in my feels as well. And then maybe it's my, uh, my other daughter, uh, Caitlin here. Come on, aren't they beautiful? That, they look like their mama. <laughs> but Katie there, she's great. You don't have to clap. Huh? She's pretty. Uh, <laughs> but she's graduating high school this year, and she's trying to figure out where she's going to go to school and thinking about moving away. So that's got me all in my feels. And then I've got a 15-year-old son who's finally out of that awkward stage where he doesn't uh, shower. He didn't want to shower. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody with teenagers, that awkward phase where boys just don't want to shower? He's finally out of it. So praise the Lord. That's got me emotional in a different way. But I've just been all in my feels. And and so as I'm preparing, I was thinking about that. And then I was also thinking, you know, maybe it has something to do with this. Uh, my wife and I, we started watching this show. I know we're a little late to the party, but have any of you guys watched the show, This Is Us? Oh, my Lord. I, I think they literally designed that show. They have written that show just to make me cry. Anybody else with me? Like, I've cried more in the past few weeks watching that show than I have the rest of my life. They've, they've written it that way to do it. And like, so I'm all emotional about that show. And I even find myself uh, asking myself the question during the week when I come up against, you know, challenges in my life or uh, I'm, I'm having to deal with a situation in my life. And I ask that question, you know, WWJD, right? What would Jack do? <laughs> right? If you haven't watched that show, that's not going to make sense. If you've watched the show... That'll make perfect sense because, anyway, watch the show. It'll be tearful and, and Jack's amazing. But all in my feels lately, all in my feels, maybe my kids, maybe it's the show, but I think it also has a lot to do with what God is doing at Bayshore Community Church. Amen. Amen. You can clap for that. I mean, God is doing amazing things. Three campuses. And, and, and so here's what I want to do. I, I, I was looking at some of our numbers uh, earlier, uh, and you may or may not know this. So each week we have uh, people who join us online, either Facebook Live or they replay on iTunes or Spotify, or they can get it on the church app. And, and, and I was looking at some of the numbers, and this is going to blow your mind. You know, every week there's about 100 people who tune in and listen uh, to the message on our church app. 100 people. On Facebook Live, there's about 400 people who will watch the sermon. Then, the podcast, either through uh, iTunes or Spotify, there's another 80 people who will listen to the message. And that's just Millsboro. Then we have Rehoboth. And Rehoboth, about 300 people will watch on Facebook. And then, there's another 40 people who will listen to the podcast, either on Spotify we're on iTunes. If you take those numbers and you add them with our normal average attendance here on a Sunday in person at both campuses, about 450 for Millsboro, and there's 275 on average in Rehoboth, we are reaching, listen to this, 1,635 people every weekend. <laughs> Amen. But that's not it. I'm not done yet. Because I know what you're thinking in Fenwick, if you're listening right now, you're thinking, I forgot about you. But I didn't forget about you. I couldn't forget about my people down there. That's Team Green uh, down there in Fenwick. And since January 12th, when we launched, it's only eight weeks ago. In eight weeks, we are right on the verge. I mean, just about to crack 200 people every weekend coming to church at Fenwick. Can we give the Lord some praise this morning for that? I mean, God is doing some amazing things. And so this morning, all I wanted to do as we're, we're ending this series, All the Fields, is I wanted us to take a moment and savor this and to not move too quickly past it, to celebrate it, savoring this moment. There's a, a, a great uh, passage in the Bible that I want us to go to today. So if you've got your Bibles, if you'll grab it, uh, in Joshua chapter 4 is where we're going to go. By the way, um, if, you, uh, 
If you don't have a Bible, we're going to put the, the scriptures up on the screen this morning. But if you don't own a Bible, we would love to give you a Bible this morning for free. So before you leave today, make sure you grab a Bible on the bookcase uh, at the back of the sanctuary. Completely free. I promise. Completely free. We're not even going to ask for your email or anything. We want everybody to have uh, the word. So make sure you grab one today if you don't have one. But I want to read you this story in Joshua. And... Um, we're actually, let's start in uh, verse 17 of chapter 3 very quickly, and, and let's get a running start at this, this passage here. So chapter 3 of Joshua, uh, verse 17 says, The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. So here you have the Israelites, and so they are at the banks of the river Jordan about to cross into the promised land that God had given them. And here God has done something miraculous again for the Israelites where he has split the Jordan river and they're walking across on dry land. So that's where we're at in verse one of chapter four. It says, when the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe. And tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up one stone on his shoulder according to the number of tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. And in the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones are to be a memorial. Everybody say memorial. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded. They took the 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites as the Lord had told Joshua and they carried them over with them to their camp where they put them down. And Joshua set up the 12 stones and, uh, uh, that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. And I'm going to skip down uh, to, uh, uh, let's see, verse 19. Verse 19 says, And on the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal. And on the eastern border of Jericho... And Joshua set up at Gilgal the 12 stones that they had taken out of the Jordan. And he said to, to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask their parents, What do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we crossed over. He did this... So that all peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. And so that you might always fear the Lord your God. So here's the thing. To understand what is happening fully in this moment. Joshua telling uh, 12 men to go get stones and to, to build a memorial to remember what God was doing. Uh, we really need to get the whole scope of, of, of what has happened to Israel. It's one thing to say that they built a memorial and they gathered 12 stones up just for the, the crossing of the Jordan, which was a miracle. I mean, it was miraculous. But if you just looked at that, you're kind of missing so much of the story because we know Israel was captive in Egypt. They were enslaved in Egypt for years and years. And through miracles, uh, uh, they were delivered. You know, the miracle that Moses was saved as a baby. He wasn't killed as the, the Pharaoh had tried to do. Then he grew up in Pharaoh's palace. That was a miracle. And then God used Moses to uh, uh, do signs and wonders and lead the people out. And then they crossed the Red Sea, which was referenced here. And during that crossing, they crossed on dry land. And then as Pharaoh gave chase, right, uh, and, and tried to catch them, uh, God God closed the water on, on Pharaoh's army and it swallowed them up. And then on and on, like miracle after miracle, God uh, had a, 
a, a cloud by day that guided the Israelites. He had a pillar of fire by night that guided them. He dropped manna from heaven. He made water come out of a rock. All of these signs and wonders and miracles that happened uh, led to this place where, again, God does something miraculous. And it's in that moment that Joshua calls for uh, the 12 stones to be gathered up so it'll be a memorial. And if we just thought it was about the crossing of the Jordan, then we're missing so much of the story. And so this morning, if you're taking notes, I would want you to write down this word, if you would. And that word is history. History. Because all of us have a story. And like the Israelites, that there was so much that led to this moment at the Jordan. There's so much that has brought us to where we are. If we look at Bayshore, there is so much that has been uh, uh, done beforehand for us to be in this moment and to celebrate what God's doing in the Bayshore. It's not enough just to look around and see what he's doing here and in Rehoboth and in Fenwick and online and all those things, but we have to look at all the things that he's done in almost 40 years of ministry. And he's done so much. It's because of the work and the commitment and the, 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 the prayers of, of, of great men and women over the years that we now get to stand on their shoulders and celebrate what God is doing now. It's because of that. It's because of the work that's been done. You know, there's, there's probably no better example that I could give this morning than this tube right here. And uh, uh, on Monday, uh, so Mondays we have our big staff meeting and we gather get together all the staff from all the campuses and we uh, have a, a time where we celebrate the wins and we talk about what God's doing at all the campuses. And so this Monday after that meeting, Miss Jody Monroe came up and she handed me this tube. And it was just an awesome uh, thing to see that this is actually the plans and the blueprints for this exact space that you're sitting in right now. And so she had had these uh, uh, at uh, her house. Uh, her and Tom had had these at their house for years. And so she brought these in and wanted to know if I wanted them. I was like, oh, absolutely. That's so cool that you've got these. And so uh, I took it to my office and I was able to place them in the corner right next to the blueprints and the plans for our new space and our new food pantry and our new offices out there. And it was such a reminder to me that that, that building that is out there now, the new space, the new offices, the new food pantry, uh, was only possible because of the work that was done for this space, right? Like, we, th it's possible that we wouldn't even have had the opportunity to do anything else, but it's because of the work, it's because of what God had done uh, through people uh, years ago that we even had the opportunity to do that. And so in our own lives, it's very similar, right? Like I believe, I believe that everything that happens in our life, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's hard, whether it's it, everything in our life, God can use in the moment. God can build on it in the moment. And so if we are going to savor what God's doing in our life, if we're going to savor the special moments in our life, then it's important that we're able to look at the history and see what God has done and see what has brought us to where we are today. Everybody say history. Second word that uh, I'd love for you to write down this morning is the word in. I in. And very simply put, if we're going to savor these special moments in our life and important moments in our life, then we need to actually be present in the moment. Present in the moment. As much as we need to remember what God has done and all the things that have brought us here, that's very important. As much as we need to remember that, it is possible to be stuck in the past. And there's all kinds of examples I could probably give for that, but, but let's just go back to this example. This building here that you now sit in that uh, helped us achieve something beyond that with, with the food pantry and all the other things, this wasn't the first building, right? There was a building before that 
uh, that was the original sanctuary and offices and all those things. And so if, if we would have clung too tightly, if we would have held too closely to that building, then this building wouldn't have existed. And, and potentially Rehoboth wouldn't have existed. And potentially Fenwick wouldn't have existed. And all those things. And so it's important that we remember the past and we look at the, our history and we see and acknowledge what God has done in our life. But if we hold too tightly to that then we can't be present in the moment and recognize and see what God is doing in the present. So it's important to look back, but don't hold too tightly. In the same way, there's a fear that we could move too quickly into the future. If we're always looking for what the next thing is or what's, what's coming next or the next challenge or the next battle or the, the next victory that we need to have, we could miss a perfect opportunity to glorify God in the moment and what he's doing now. If we don't slow down and if we don't kind of take a moment and pause and savor that moment, we can just move right on past it and move right towards the next thing. And so it's important that we're in the moment, that we're present in the moment, remembering where we came from, remembering those who went before us and those shoulders that we stand on, but being present, not moving too fast to the next thing, being present. So everybody say in. First word was history. Second word is in. And so I want us to, uh, uh, here in this last uh, point this morning, I want us to look at a different passage. And uh, this is why I love the Bible, uh, I, I'll show you when I get there, but it's just an amazing uh, uh, passage, knowing what we've just read, and then what we're going to read now was about 1,000 years later this was written, about 1,000 years later, and it's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, in verse 16, it says this, I am the Lord who opened the way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. Isaiah is remembering what God had done all the way back in Joshua and in Exodus. He's remembering that. And I, it says in verse 17, I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses, and I drew them beneath the waves, and they drowned their lives, snuffed out like a smoldering candle. And Isaiah is saying, remember what God did that was so great? Do you guys remember that? Do you remember that? But look at what Isaiah says in verse 18, and I love this so much. He says, but forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. And so this morning, I just wanted to take a moment and savor what God is doing here at Bayshore 1,800 people every weekend are impacted by this community, this small church in Gumboro, Delaware. 18, over 1,800 people. I want to savor the moment where we have a flourishing Rehoboth campus. They're trying to figure out if they, they need to go to three services or look for a new space because of what God's doing there. We have a brand new Fenwick campus about to crack 200 people a weekend. You know, mo most churches in America never even top 80. God's, God's moving, God's doing something. And so I wanted to take a moment and savor that with you. But then God says, that's nothing compared to what I want to do. There's nothing compared. God said, you thought that was good? You thought that was amazing? Just wait and see what I do next. That's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. And for some of you here, you need to know that your best life, your, the best part of your life is not behind you. God wants you to know this morning that there is more ahead. You don't have to just dream of the glory days, but you can look and you can see here that God has more for you. And so if you're taking notes, I want you to write down the last part, the last thing here, and that is the making. The making. Because I believe Bayshore Community Church is 
history in the making. That there is almost 40 years of history where we can look back and we can see what God has done. That we can gather up the stones of everything that God has done in our past. And we can look at it and we can say how great God is and what a great work that he has done. And we can be present and savor what he is doing in this moment right now because he is doing amazing things. But there is more. There is more, and it is in the making. And God is making a future for Bayshore Community Church that is beyond anything that we can fathom, anything that we can dream of. And the same is true of your life, that you are history. There is things in your past that God is working all together for your good, whether it's good or it's bad, no matter what it is, that he is using that. Nothing is wasted in your life. And in the present moment, you can look and you can celebrate all that God is doing. And if you don't hold too tight to the past and you don't move too quick into the future, that God can show you his goodness in your life and what he's doing in your life. But man, there is more in the making for your life. You are history in the making. And so as we close out this series, I just, you know, I just wanted to savor that. I wanted to savor this moment with all of you. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for what you're, you're showing us, God. You're, you're revealing to us, Lord, and I just believe uh, God, that you, you're doing amazing things, and I can look back and see everything that, that, that has led to this point, God, and I'm just believing, as your word says, that there is greater things to come, God. And so together, in unity today, we, we unite around that, that message, and we unite around that idea, uh, God, that, that, that uh, there's greater things to come. And so I pray over everybody uh, under the sound of my voice today from this room to the Fenwick campus to the online folks, God, that you would just begin by your spirit to show them that they are history in the making, that their best is not behind them, but their best is in front of them, Lord. And so I pray uh, over each one, God, that they would just well up in their spirit and that they would sense that in their lives, God, that you are working all things together for their good and you have a plan for them. So God, we thank you for what you are going to do and uh, just give you praise and honor. It is all for your glory. It's all for your glory, not for the glory of Bayshore or any one person, God, but for your glory. So be glorified in what we do here. We thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Thank you. And uh, in Fenwick there, Brad's going to be coming up, I believe, and ending your service there. And here, uh, if uh, you would like, Pastor Jeff and his team will be over to the side. If you'd like prayer this morning or if you'd like to take communion, uh, feel free to do that. Also, I want to encourage you. Nate spoke a little earlier about getting uh, plugged in and serving somewhere. I'm telling you, if you haven't found a place to serve... You are missing out on one of the most fulfilling experiences and one of the most vital experiences, I believe, to uh, this thing we call Christianity. Something happens when you go from being a consumer on Sunday to being somebody who is investing in others and serving with others and and be part of that. And so I'm just going to challenge you this this morning. I'm going to go a little beyond and just say, take some time. Fill it out. Here's the thing. If you sign up for uh, the production team and you, feel, you figure out that you hate using a camera, find somewhere else to do it. I know some of you can play the guitar. I know some of you can. You can I, there's people out here who can play piano, who can sing, and we're calling on you to get plugged in. And it's not because we're, we're in such desperate need, but we know that it's good for you as well. So take some time and think about that. Also, marriage uh, conference, sign up for that. I'm telling you, uh, even if your marriage you feel is great, you can benefit from uh, a focused time investing in your marriage. And then next steps and the welcome lunch, all important stuff. So make sure you check that out. Thank you guys again. It's good being back with you for one Sunday. I hope you have an amazing week and uh, you stay healthy. All right.